My name is Martin Masters, and um, we have a company called Shalita Fire LLC. Uh, we launched in fall of 2009, and our core competency is wildland fire management. So we do a number of things, but um, really what we like to hang our hat on is uh, wildland fire suppression. So basically we provide high quality um, apparatus, you know, firefighting equipment and personnel to federal agencies in times of need. Um, you know, I actually, I knew what I wanted to do my entire life, which was kind of uh, uncommon, I know, but I always wanted to be a wildland firefighter, and so I had the opportunity to do that uh, for about eight and a half years once I graduated high school throughout college um, and then for a few years beyond and I kind of worked uh, for several different agencies actually all five federal land management agencies and um, you know several different levels and uh, just pr kind of progressed through um, the ranks and wildland fire management as a federal employee. Um, in the last position I had I, I was an employee of the National Interagency Fire Center um, out of Boise, Idaho for the Bureau of Indian Affairs and I started to get uh, a little bit more familiar with the administrative side of things and understand how um, you know the administrative side of fire actually worked and uh, unfortunately there were not a lot of job opportunities for me in Oklahoma in my industry um, like there might be in other parts of the US for example the western US so um, and some other family factors as well just felt like it was time to uh, do what I thought that I would never consider doing but leave, leave the agency full time and uh, move back to Oklahoma and venture out into the private sector and try to um, you know, start up a business. The service that we probably take most pride in is providing high quality emergency response resources to the federal government. So what that means specifically is, um, let's say there's a fire burning somewhere in the U.S. and public sector resources, you know, whether it be federal, state, um, tri tribal or local municipal government are exhausted, then um, increasingly there's a need for um, some federal agencies to rely upon private contractors and that's where we come in. Um, you know, we answer the call when catastrophic wildfires occur and our crews respond anywhere in the U.S. Um, you know, are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week to respond to wildfires and other emergencies as well, but primarily wildfires um, to go, you know, and out and do a number of duties to work alongside, you know, federal and other public sector firefighters um, in extinguishing wildfires, protecting homes, you know, and protecting lives and property. From a firefighting standpoint, all of our qualifications are um, administered and the entire, our entire qualification system is administered by uh, the National Wildfire Coordinating Group and so there's actually a national standard and then we're actually a member of a trade organization known as the no National Wildfire Suppression Association and um, that is uh, that has allowed us to operate uh, under an MOU memorandum of understanding with the U.S. Forest Service um, to be able to provide NWCG accredited, you know, federally accredited training to our own firefighters as well as of other agencies and also to maintain their qualifications for a nationwide response. We do a number of other things though. Training is really huge for us. We are constantly um, training internally here our own employees, um, you know, providing different types of wildland firefighting and instant command and leadership training for them. Uh, then we also go out and provide that training contracted to a number of entities and organizations um, across the state and really across the U.S. Now, there are other things that we do that are not wildfire related in the off season, but you know, that's what everyone pictures as the big flames, the big wildfires. But we do a number of other things. We do a lot of forestry work. We do a lot of mitigation, you know, working with homeowners and homeowners uh, associations and insurance companies to um, help uh, homeowners understand how to make their homes more defensible in case of a wildfire. I mean, actually going in and completing projects to make them more defensible, you know, firefighters actually going in with chainsaws and cutting down brush and trees around home, and that's a common service we provide. So there are a lot of other, you know, things that we do that are on the periphery of the actual firefighting, like any firefighters, but, um, you know, the training is definitely a key component of it. Now, there aren't a high number of companies in the U.S. that do exactly what we do. There are approximately 200 companies uh, across the U.S. market research has indicated that do some of what we do, provide some of the re uh, services that we do, but um, there are actually only about two or three companies that provide the full complement of services. You know, they are nearly exactly the same as, as what we do, and those are located, you know, on the West Coast, of course. The prime type of employee that we like to recruit is someone who uh, is has a solid agency background first before, prior to coming to work for us. Typically, those people who've worked on an air agency hotshot crew as a smoke jumper or a hello repeller for you know, the Forest Service or one of the other land management agencies. And so typically those folks, um, and, and that's what I used to do, you know, as well as be a hello repeller, but those folks um, typically have a higher level of 
training, experience, physical fitness, et cetera, than you would find commonly among the ranks of all wildland firefighters. And so um, we love to recruit and retain those type of folks, which we do a lot of in the winter uh, months, October to April, um, you know, seasonal housing set up here in Oklahoma City for them. And, um, and we'll bring those types of individuals in for the fire season um, while they're on furlough from their agency firefighting jobs, which typically run through the summer months in the western U.S. And it's really a win-win for them because as opposed to being on furlough for, you know, three to six months out of the year in the winter, they get to come down you know, to the south, central, southeastern U.S. and develop their qualifications and uh, learn how to fight fire in a new, new fuel types, new vegetation, and, and just learn a different kind of operation. So the name of our company is Shalita Fire, and um, basically where that word is derived from, it's uh, of Cherokee origin. There's actually a small community in northeast Oklahoma that is um, referred to as Shalita. That's not too far at all from where I'm from. So when I was trying to find something to name the business, I wanted something that was identifiably Oklahoman and identifiably Native American because, as I mentioned, our crews work all over the U.S. and it's a good conversation topic. You know, from a branding standpoint, it's worked really well for us. Uh, um, but just, you know, when the crews are in the field, folks want to come up and ask them, you know, who are you guys, what are you doing? And it's an opportunity for, you know, and the name is so unique that it's a good opportunity for our personnel to say, you know, hey, we're, uh, we're from Oklahoma, we're proud, you know, Okies, and, uh, or, you know, a number of our employees, uh, probably around, I'm not sure where we're at right now, probably 55% uh, or so, probably about 55% of our employees are Native American, so it's a good opportunity to, you know, just tell the public, hey, you know, we're from proudly from Oklahoma, and most of our employees are native as well. The way that we came, became familiar with the Business Development Center was through the Small Business Administration, SBA, uh, Emerging 200, E200 initiative, um, which we were actually in, in two, we actually participated in in 2010. And that was a phenomenal opportunity for us. That really opened a lot of doors, one of which was the ability to meet Greg Keeson here um, at the Business Development Center, whose expertise and career experience and background um, dovetailed nicely with uh, a lot of the needs that we had in terms of needs for financial consulting assistance. We, pr we probably became a, a BDC client in you know, mid-spring of 2010, and then by June, we decided that we definitely needed to expand our operation to include an office uh, here at the Business Incubator just because of the resources that were available here that we were in need of. As a client of the BDC, we try to take advantage of all the resources that are available to us. Um, so, you know, of course, the first is the tax incentives, um, you know, by virtue of the state legislature, which is a big help to us, um, as well as just, you know, the opportunity to office uh, out of a very high quality, technologically advanced, you know, new modern facility. Um, that was a big selling point for us to be able to have access to, um, you know, conference rooms and, uh, you know, just office and IT equipment and just nice facilities that, you know, when you're uh, a broke shoestring entrepreneur just starting out, that obviously you do not have the, a lot of people don't have the financial means to afford, but just because you can't afford those types of facilities doesn't mean that you don't need them to, you know, professionally operate your business. Um, some of the other resources, probably the number one resource that we take advantage of here is just the consulting opportunity and the networking. Um, you know, the personnel here, the More Norman Technology Center personnel at the BDC are just phenomenal in terms of the support that they give us, um, in terms of the uh, advice and consulting that we get, professional you know, business consulting and advice, as well as um, the ability to reach out to individuals within their business networks um, to find, us, you know, find the solutions that we're looking for as problems arise in our managing our business. Um, we've experienced approximately 1,100% growth um, each of the two years that we've been here at the incubator. So we're up to a uh, position now where we've got about 83 employees and, um, and we're conducting operations throughout the um, entire lower 48 um, on multiple um, multi-year federal contracts. You know, essentially when we started out um, as an incubator inhabitant in uh, spring to summer 2010, um, we were essentially still in the idea phase of the business. You know, we had just started to um, garner a few federal multi-year contracts, but r really hardly any, and um, we really had not yet begun to operate under those. So to be honest with you, we were um, a true startup business, you know, a startup business in the truest sense of the word because we were literally just starting to get our operations going and get our feet under us. Um, from that time until now, fast forward, 
uh, we've just experienced phenomenal growth, and a lot of that is due, you know, I would say a vast majority of the success and growth we've experienced has been, or could be attributed to us being, a, you know, housed here at the incubator. Uh, we won numerous awards. We've won, um, well, of course, we participate in the SBA Emerging 200 initiative, like I, I explained to you a bit ago, but we also um, were named the 2011 uh, Journal Record Oklahoma, uh, in one of the innovators of the year. We also won uh, from the American Indian Chamber of Commerce of Oklahoma, 2011 Small Business of the Year, and then, of course, more recently from the Small Business Administration, first uh, Oklahoma Young Entrepreneur of the Year, uh, followed up by the National Award, uh, National Young Entrepreneur of the Year from the SBA. Um, you know, in the short run here, what we're trying to do is continue to refine the infrastructure so that um, as we grow, once we leave the incubator, that, you know, we're stable and we're consistent in that growth and, um, you know, maintain the long-term viability of the company. And then just long-term, I mean, for the company, uh, obviously our objective is, uh, you know, we pride ourselves on being the best um, within our industry by far. And, um, you know, that, that can be a struggle sometimes when you are in the midst of phenomenal um, growth percentages and and hiring and receiving new contracts and purchasing new equipment. It's just, um, it's mind numbing how quickly this has all happened for us. But, um, you know, at the end of the day, we just want to ensure that, you know, that we're the best out there and that um, our, our people are the most committed. They enjoy working for the company, you know, through the good times and the hardships and that, you know, that we're a family around here and that we take care of them and that, um, you know, we're around here to take care of folks for the long haul and, and for, Know, do our best to take care of each other outside work, you know, and, and the important aspects of life. So, probably the number one word that I like to relate to other young entrepreneurs is just hustle. I mean, people frequently come to us and ask, you know, what, how did you, how is this happening? You know, how? Because the growth is phenomenal, and we are winning a number of awards, and and we're super, you know, like I said, we're super humbled by that. But um, you know, the thing that I just tell them is just, it's, you know, for lack of a better term, it's straight hustle. You just, you literally out hustle the competition. Um, and we have kind of a saying around here, and it's kind of a joke, to be honest with you. Um, it's kind of taken on the form of a joke, but um, apparently I have a lot of catchphrases, and I'm not aware of these, but my employees are very aware of them. And one of the most frequently heard catchphrases around here, I guess, for me is, um, make it happen. And, you know, that's basically just a mantra for, uh, you know, hustling, no excuses, just get it done with excellence um, in an expedient manner. And, you know, that's why I demand out of myself and that's what I demand out of, you know, we demand out of each other, everyone on the team. And so actually one of our firefighters went so far last year to as, uh, as to um, create these wristbands that say Shalita Fire on one side and make it happen on another. And um, uh, these are real, a real source of pride actually now with our company for you know, people to have uh, a make it happen wristband because it means that they made it happen. and. Um, it's just a way that, you know, we can encourage each other and, and just uh, remind each other that, you know, there is, uh, there is some motivation behind our madness. So.